Ladies and gentlemen, can I please have your attention? Can I just please ask you to buy Mazdas? Will, will you do me that favor? I feel like we've got to know each other pretty well by now. Will you, will you just do me that favor and please buy Mazdas? No other mainstream manufacturer deserves success as much as Mazda does. Mainly because no other mainstream brand has stayed as loyal to their core brand identity as Mazda has. Well, I mean, except maybe like Chrysler, whose brand identity is depressing irrelevance. <laughs> What's going on everyone, Jax here, and today we have the 2020 Mazda CX-30. Why am I so sweet on Mazda? Well, the answer is simple. It's because no other brand pays me as much money as Mazda does. It's not true. No, I'm kidding. The reason is far more simple than that. It's just because of how unabashedly delightful Mazdas are. They're flawed, sure, but every brand has its flaws. But Mazda hasn't yet given in to that sort of cynical, segment-chasing, profit-maximizing trash that's churned out by so many other manufacturers. Especially ones that come from a country that rhymes with Germany. The Germans. Has this hurt Mazda's overall profits over the years? Well, yeah, sure, probably, but they're a really small company trying to compete with corporate giants like General Motors and Toyota and Volkswagen. So they have to be really thoughtful with their engineering because their pockets and resources just aren't as deep. They can't as easily develop a new vehicle, so they sometimes have to adapt existing ones. And that brings us to the stupidly named CX-30, which is really just a tall Mazda 3 hatchback and that's totally fine. Fun fact, the Mazda 3 hatchback was the very first press car I ever got last year, so it kind of has a special place in my heart, aside from being an excellent vehicle. The CX-3, in case you were wondering, is actually based on the diminutive Mazda 2, which is sold elsewhere in the world, so they couldn't call this vehicle the CX-3, which would have made more sense, but you know, such is life. Basing the CX-30 on the Mazda 3 comes with a few inherent advantages. First and foremost, the gorgeous Mazda Kodo design language translates quite well to sort of being a taller version of itself. So the Mazda CX-30 is instantaneously one of the best looking vehicles in its class. Whatever class that is, whatever you call this class. But it's the best looking one. The competition isn't stiff, but it's the best looking one. Second, the three's excellent body control and athletic handling are present and accounted for in the CX-30. And lastly, the three hatchback's phenomenal and luxurious interior makes its way to the Mazda CX-30, which immediately makes it feel far more expensive than it actually is. And this has sort of become Mazda's MO in recent years. Under promise and way, way over deliver. European road manners with unbelievably luxurious interiors make most modern Mazdas feel more like sort of Japanese Audis than Toyota Corolla competitors. In fact, the CX-30's svelte sheet metal and gorgeous interior wouldn't look out of place parked in front of an extremely expensive restaurant, or maybe a local country club, or perhaps a JC Penny. You can't say the same about the Chevy whatever it's called, or the Subaru any of them. Powering the Mazda is Mazda's 2.5 5 liter Sky Active G four cylinder engine, making 186 horsepower and 186 pound feet of torque, which is perfectly adequate if you're still watching Dawson's Creek and eating Dunkaroos. Dunkaroos. Fortunately for the 2021 model year, Mazda is dropping in their excellent turbocharged four cylinder that makes 250 horsepower and a lusty 320 pound feet of torque 
when filled up with premium 93 octane. Sorry, California. <laughs> I had the chance to test this engine in the Mazda CX-5 last year, and it's a blast. It perfectly suits the character of not only the car, but more importantly, it suits the character of Mazda, and it enlivens the car and makes it so much more fun to drive than it already actually is, which is substantial. I have zero doubt that that engine will have the same effect on the CX-30, possibly even more so, because the CX-30 is smaller than the CX-5 and the CX-9, which both use that engine. So if I were you, I would wait for that engine because it's totally worth it. But outright power isn't where the Mazda wins you over anyway. I mean, just look at the Mazda Miata. It's the driving experience that elevates Mazdas beyond all of their closest competitors because quite frankly, they're so far beyond anything else you're likely to encounter. Only Honda even comes close to providing the driving experience you get out of a Mazda. I know, I know, it sounds like I'm waxing poetic about Mazda as if they have no flaws whatsoever. And they do, trust me, we'll get to them. But there's an elegance to the act of driving when you're behind the wheel of a Mazda, and that's what sets it apart. Let me show you what I mean. Well, here we are in the Mazda CX-30. And in yet another recent video, I'm not wearing sunglasses. So this is weird and scary and uncomfortable because I have to look directly into my eyes, but not when I'm supposed to be looking at the road. So I've been going on and on and on about how great Mazda is, and how great Mazda cars handle. And that's because they do. The ride in the CX-30 is absolutely sublime. This car rides fantastically. Body control and body motions are kept in check. It's comfortable, it's smooth, it still feels athletic. Any sort of bounces or dips the car handles with ease. It's a very premium feeling ride. It feels like a luxury car, the way it sort of glides over the road. There just isn't another mainstream brand that kind of nails this. You can have cars that are more sporty and you can certainly have cars that are less sporty and ride like absolute garbage, but nobody puts it all together like Mazda. There's a sort of cohesiveness here in the driving experience. The steering in the CX-30 is really good. It's very accurate. It has a nice weight to it. It's not really that heavy, to be honest with you. The steering wheel itself too feels great. It's, it's almost delicate. It's got nice grip set. 10 and 2, but it's not like one of those big kind of artificially fat steering wheels that you're finding in sort of modern BMWs. That's sort of like, I'm sporty because I'm so fat, I'm like a race car. And you're like, yeah, but no, you're not. And this isn't a race car, this is a small SUV-ish tall hatch. So I think the steering wheel feels fantastic. The leather on it's nice as well. But there's an ease to driving a Mazda thanks to that good steering. It's so accurate that you just need minimal adjustments and the car just tracks exactly where you want it. Now when you get into it a little bit, there is some understeer. I think Mazda's all-wheel drive system is actually pretty good and it sort of helps to mitigate that feeling a little bit. And there's a little bit more roll than you would expect, but it's not floppy. It's controlled. It's just sort of leaning over on its front corner to remind you, hey, by the way, this is not a Miata, although the Miata has a surprising amount of roll, just throwing that out there. And when you combine the steering with the overall ride quality, and then you combine it with the supremely perfect throttle and brake calibration, for a car like this, the throttle and the brake pedal's firmness and linearity, it's just on another level compared to sort of everyday transportation. I've driven a lot of sort of small SUVs over the past couple of months. And one of the things that stands out to me is how sort of grabby some of their brakes can be, especially on initial bite or as you approach the stop. And the Mazda's brake pedal is perfectly firm, perfectly linear, feels really good, and it always has the sort of same effect. You just know how much braking to dial in to bring yourself to a perfectly smooth stop. I know that sounds like a weird thing to praise, but it's totally true. We're on the handling road, by the way, in case you couldn't tell. And the Mazda's ride on this road is absolutely fantastic. Going around the first turn, minimal roll, 
The car's soaking up these ridiculous bumps and undulations. I don't really know what's wrong with this road. To be honest with you, I've just been calling it the handling road all this time, but something is clearly wrong with this road. One of the most impressive things that the Mazda does on this particular road is it dispatches the nasty bump that I sort of used to see how the chassis is affected by one corner of the car hitting a particularly good bump right there. One dip and the rebound is totally controlled. And it's not firm, it's not overly sporty. It feels compliant. In fact, it's very plush. I would compare it to that Lexus UX I had in that I was highly surprised at how well that car rode considering what it was. And the Mazda easily rides as well as that car while being slightly more athletic and um, much, much better looking. These seats, by the way, are incredibly comfortable. They're actually squishier than I thought they would be. The butt cushion and the back cushion is very plush, but they don't feel formless or shapeless. They're just a lot more kind of comfy than I was expecting. Driving position is excellent. I love that the Mazda's wheel comes out far enough for a taller driver like me. I've got the seat pretty far back and the wheel comes out to give me a perfect driving position. That just shows good attention to detail and you know, frankly, they're trying to serve a very wide array of driver body types and I appreciate that. Oh, and after being in the Hyundai venue for a week, I appreciate these cushy padded leather armrests. Go watch that review if you wanna know what I'm talking about. Now, what's the downside of the Mazda CX-30? Well, it's a little tight in here if you were having to sit behind me, which, well, to be honest with you, that's impossible. You can't sit behind me, no human could. So that's a bit of a downside. Although I did have Ellen, her tall friend in the car, and they had no trouble in the passenger in the back seat behind the passenger, but behind someone as tall as me, no, it's a no-go. The only downside of the driving experience, in my opinion, is the six-speed automatic transmission. Six speeds is like just enough in 2020 standards. And when you get after it, it's, it's actually really responsive and it shifts very quickly. But at lower speeds, especially just off of a stop, it's almost like a little confused, like, hey, you wanna play? Oh, no, oh, no, you don't wanna play. Oh, you're stuck in traffic, aren't you? What a shame that is. I'm a little confused, but I'll get the job done. It's not bad, and you only notice it if you're like an enthusiast sort of driver, but it's definitely a little hunty and unsure at lower speeds. When you start moving faster, it shifts actually really quickly for a mainstream auto. You can put it in sport mode, and all that really does is it causes the transmission to hold gears in sort of a, I don't know, kind of a ridiculous way. I mean, this is a small, tall wagon, so, you know, there's only so much fun to be had but it will hold gears and it'll go right up to the red line and it'll leave it up to you. And you can use these paddle shifters if you know, you're know you so inclined. I don't know really why you would be, but you could do that if you wanted to. I actually like to do it more race car style and put it over into manual mode because Mazda gets that you, person just totally pulled out in front of that truck. Mazda gets that you pull back to upshift and you push forward to downshift. That's just kind of cool. I would also say this car isn't particularly fast. If you drop the hammer like this, There's some noise and it gets up to speed, but 186 horsepower is just not gonna move this thing with authority. The engine's really smooth, sounds kinda good, I guess, but you're not going anywhere quickly, so hold on for that 250 horsepower, 320 pound-feet of torque, turbo four. That engine in this car, that'd be a lot of fun. Yeah, but sport mode, it, it's kind of pointless. I mean, I appreciate that Mazda includes it, but like, come on, you know. You, you made the car good enough, Mazda. You don't have to add like a sporty mode. And in case you think that I am just making all of this Mazda excellence up off the top of my head, that I couldn't think of anything better to say, so I was just like, Mazdas are great, blah, 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 drives well. This is my clipboard with all the notes on it. And it says, excellent, next to like a whole bunch of them. I'm not even gonna look, cause you know, that's not safe. But it says excellent next to so many categories. In my script, excellent. I had to think of other words, like adjectives to use, like I needed to open up the thesaurus. I used to teach English for God's sake. And I'm sitting here going, how many different ways can I say excellent, superb, amazing, fantastic, all of these different things that you would describe in a Mazda. 
And it's true. It's because it's true. This car just drives on another level. $31,000. Uh, I don't know, but you know what? You're going to get most of this goodness in the $21,000 model, so you're not missing out. If there's one area where Mazda is unparalleled among mainstream automakers, it's in the interior, both in terms of design and overall material quality. Mazda ditches consoles festooned with buttons made out of cheap-feeling plastic and chintzy cliché designs in favor of rich-feeling leather and fake leather, soft-touch plastics everywhere, and simple and intuitive infotainment controls. The gauges are easy to read, the infotainment is comprehensive, and this premium model comes with all of Mazda's safety features, including lane keep assist, radar cruise control, blind spot monitoring, rear cross-traffic alert, all of the things that make Mazda's top safety picks. Sure, you could argue that $31,670 is a lot of money for a small SUV, but to get this many options combined with this quality of materials combined with this stellar of a driving experience you would have to spend far more money to get something much uglier like a audi q3 if there's a downside to this interior it's certainly not in the richness and opulence of the materials and designs it's the size or the lack of it. Now, while Mazdas tend to be on the smaller end of the vehicles in their class, this CX-30 doesn't quite feel as egregious as something like the CX-9. The CX-9 is woefully inadequate for the class of vehicle that it's in, but the CX-30 doesn't really feel that way. In fact, in terms of front seat space and cargo volume, the CX-30 feels completely fine. It's only in the rear seat space where things get a little tight. But if you're driving around with your family in a vehicle like this, you probably don't have grown children. And despite it being on the tight size, I was able to carry Ella, who is six feet tall, to volleyball practice while her friend, who is nearly six feet tall, sat behind her, and they seemed okay for the short journey. So basically what I'm saying is that the perceived downside of this interior being a little on the small side really only comes into play in a few certain situations and most of them involve the back seat. As a tiny SUV, the Mazda CX-30 is pretty good, and it's certainly not at a disadvantage like the CX-9. So I doubt you'll really feel that way unless you try to pack your giant family into one like mine. But then again, that's why we have a Suburban. We don't just have a CX-30. So should you buy a CX-30? Um, especially because I just said that this model costs 31 grand. Well, let's break this down a bit because I think for some of you guys, this vehicle could be absolutely perfect. I mean, to be honest with you, I'm strongly considering getting a CX-30 for Ella, maybe a used one as a first car, even though she said she doesn't like it because she doesn't like anything that's not a Wrangler. But I honestly think the CX-30 could really suit some of you. So let's take a look. The front wheel drive base model of the CX-30 actually costs right around 22 grand, which is a fantastic deal. For context, the Hyundai Venue that I just tested cost 23 grand, and the Mazda CX-30 is a better vehicle in literally every single way imaginable. Every way. The Hyundai Venue drop kicks your sense of self-esteem into the nearest storm drain. Hiya, Georgie. Well, the Mazda CX-30 flatters you and makes you feel good every time you're behind the wheel. Kind of like you're in on some kind of automotive secret that nobody else knows about. And that's the magic of Mazda. Now, when you start adding comfort and convenience options, like this model's LED headlights, rain-sensing wipers, moonroof, power tailgate, heated seats, ability to fly, just kidding, one of those was fake. Well, then the price goes up, of course, but I would argue the price goes up appropriately. For comparison, the slightly smaller Lexus UX Hybrid that I tested a few months ago starts at 37 grand. It certainly doesn't look any better than the Mazda. It frankly looks worse than the Mazda. It doesn't drive any better than the Mazda. So unless you are desperate to have a luxury badge on the front end of your car, it doesn't really make any sense why you would choose something like the Lexus UX over the Mazda CX-30. Why would you pay more for a badge when the CX-30 gives you all of the excellence for far less, and you can even get into one for just over 20 grand. So that kind of brings me back to my original plea. 
In a world rapidly filling with crossovers and SUVs that seek to exploit the booming demand for such vehicles by being little more than overly styled tall cars, masquerading as utilitarian transportation, the Mazda CX-30 shows us what an automaker can accomplish when it takes the time to thoughtfully engineer excellence into such a formula, rather than attempt to cash in on consumer demand. It's also clear evidence that a superlative starting point tends to yield a class-leading finished product, and that a brand that stays true to its core values is not only to be respected, but to be desired, to be sought after. This is why I'm a fan of Mazda, and this is why I implore you to go drive one before you make your next automotive purchase. You don't have to be an enthusiast to appreciate Mazda's passion. It'll be evident the minute you drive away. Why not? It's 2020. Well, good thing I wasn't filming when you beeped your car. You can't say the same. In a few months. The hell? I'm really gonna have to sit here this long. Nobody's coming. Excellent stoplight programming. Yep. Still sitting here. Not a soul in sight. I even like the infotainment, it's so easy to use. The screens are bigger now, thanks Mazda. They were a little late to the party on some of those screens, you know, they had like a three inch screen in the CX-5 or something. I'm just kidding, it wasn't actually three inches. It was like 3.1. I mean, you don't have to buy this car. You could get like a Toyota CHR instead and, and your family would have to stage some kind of intervention. Hope the rain didn't pick up too much on the microphone. Hope the microphone isn't broken. I dropped it when I was leaving the house. I was trying to keep the dog inside. He just didn't respect my need to go film. So much for his YouTube debut. We got a new dog, in case you were wondering. Our 17-year-old cat passed away two weeks ago, and the girls were very sad. They wanted to rescue another animal, so. We rescued a friendly black lab hound mix from local animal shelter. Just trying to do our part, give a good animal a home. And they love that guy. He is a barrel of monkeys, which is weird, because he's a dog. But you don't say barrel of dogs. You say barrel of puppies, but that sort of has negative connotations, like you're running some kind of ring or something. Even the turn signals are like refined. Instead of a clackety clack, it's like a like a really mellowed out turn signal. And the turn signals blink and then fade away. It's like they just couldn't help themselves. God, I want Mazda to win. Buy a freaking Mazda. If you don't buy a Mazda, I'm gonna come to your house and punch you in the throat. <laughs> 